first O'Neill I ever saw was the uh, original production in 1946 of The Iceman Cometh, which with, with had a dinner break then. And, uh, it was quite a long evening, uh, and it was uh, really what, uh, I, maybe it was that it was in a bar room that attracted me, I don't know. And when the opportunity came back for some reason to do O'Neill, to do The Iceman in 1956, a friend of mine said, Jason, you, uh, Jose's doing The Iceman down at the Circle. And I was supposed to go to work, and I didn't. I went down to the Circle. Uh, the minute I heard it, and it must, that something drew me right back to that, to, to do that. O'Neill, that was my connection with O'Neill. Then the, all the things of being part of O'Neill started to fall into place. The fact that my father, you know, my father was an actor, his father was an actor. I had a younger brother, and he had a younger brother. Uh, uh, we went to, I was at sea for seven years, uh, six and a half years, and he was at sea for certain. All these things filtered in. I mean, I never connected them at all until I started doing Iceman and Long Day's Journey in Tonight. So here was this connection kept uh, unfolding in the first three years that I, I did O'Neill. I seemed to feel that O'Neill always showed me the way to do it. Uh, whereas most people say, oh, he wrote too many uh, stage directions, blah, 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 blah. You know, they say that. Uh, he, uh, don't look, listen to those things. I found that, that those were the things that really helped me. I made a terrible mistake once when somebody said, race all the uh, uh, stage directions. Then just, you know, start, uh, do something else. Well, the minute we did that, we were completely lost. So we had to go back and, uh, uh, I mean, to scratch them out. We had to go back and, er and erase our scratch outs of stage. We put them all back in. You know, Jose knew that. I think the most universal play of all is The Iceman Cometh which takes in almost the world. It takes in all, all kinds of situations. The Boer War, the English, the this, the blacks, the whites, the, the, the Italians, the, every strata, strata of life. It's unbelievable what he covers in there. It's the symphony, as Jose said. Opening night, or afternoon, we open at one in the afternoon so they get the reviews in by the night papers, the morning papers. Uh, after the third act, there was a break, and uh, I went down, the dressing room I had was down in a cloak room, is where of this, of this, of this circle, a small theater. And I was getting ready to go on in the last day. I was sitting there, and then the, 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 the blackout went, and the guys went on stage, and then the lights come up. We didn't have a curtain, the lights all came up. And uh, I was sitting in the dressing room, I heard a tremendous ovation went up incredible ovation and I ran from my dressing room in the cloakroom up to the bar area where Jose said I said Jose what the hell happened and he said they all stood the entire audience critics everybody stood on their feet when the when the lights came up for the beginning of the four, the last act and cheered for almost a minute I said holy Christ they think the play's over I haven't even got to the uh, to the end yet? What the heck? What happened? I mean, they think the play... No, he says, no, no. He says, a fucking symphony. He said, that's the last movement of the symphony. He often felt that Long Day's Journey was one of his greatest plays, and, but it was uh, a beautiful, beautiful string quartet, he said. And on uh, when Colleen and I were doing Moon for the Misbegotten during rehearsal, he said, you know, I think I'll move all that stuff, that whole scene, that 40 minute long scene, move it out over there because it's a pavan. It's a pavan, he said. So I said to Lois, what's a pavan? And she said, well, that's when two people, <laughs> it's, a two, it's a twosome then. Go, move, move. And, then, and he had his move. So he, he thought in these terms is what I'm getting to. And it, but, uh, that is some string quartet long day's journey, wouldn't it? Yes. It's amazing. It has drawn universally everyone into the family unit somehow, or family that they didn't have or did have, 
or reminded them of things that have happened in their family because it's terribly a deep family play and uh, love and hate and how we handle these things and uh, or if we handle them. You know, James Tyrone's speech too about the fact that he looked back on his life and he sold out and he looks back on it and says, when I think of all the things that happened and I lost the great talent I once had and, and the great artist I might have been. And all the people in the play are might have been. Jamie says, Look in my face, my name is Might Have Been. I am also called No More, Too Late, Farewell. And uh, the only one that survived it was Edmund, uh, who was, in a strange way, beaten upon by all three of them. But this young guy got out, which is O'Neill, really, in the play. I worked every day of my life on Ice Men. You see, you never can learn enough in these plays. You, you could do them for forever and uh, you still find things it's always something something new unfolds Jose said yes you know uh, when we have pickup rehearsal he said it's like a Spanish dancer that you first see they spin and you see a color of a petticoat maybe just a little thing and then it gets more involved and all of a sudden another color shows up and you see you see all the colors of the rainbow finally when they're in the dance, when they're really there. You say, I don't think I can do this tonight. It's too much in this. I remember I said to Colleen during, uh, we did eight performances a week of Moon for the Misbegotten, and it's a three hour and 45 minute play. And we didn't cut, we didn't do any of that stuff. And we played it out, the whole bloody thing. And it was a fabulous, fabulous play. And I thought it was a Freudian soap when I read it. And then I suddenly realized the guy is, is, is a genius. Once you get in, you say, what did I ever think that for? And you get to a point doing a three hour and 45 minute play where you, you say, if you're doing eight a week and you say between a man, and, geez, I don't know if I can make it. And I mean, I can do it, but I, I may cut down a bit. I say to the colleague, you know, I may have to, I'll, I'll give you the, everything I got, but I, I, uh, I don't know if I can get the full emotional value come late in the play, you know, in the latter half of the play. And she said, you know, I feel that way at times too. But sure enough, about halfway into that, I was just going along and all of a sudden a hand came out and it came right in the middle of my back and just gave me a push like this. Up and sore, everything was there. And it was O'Neill, it was his writing and his hand and it was him. And I know that he filled me with that. And it happened again on the evening performance that I felt, well, I really gave it. I don't know if I was just happening. And then I had never worried about it again. See, I, I just knew it was going to be there. And it was. You know, your first time out in front of an audience is the hardest performance of all because you don't realize what you've rehearsed, what, what will, where it will hit in a in a man and that's where i'm nervous i'm not nervous opening i'm nervous when oh my god is that what it means or boy did we go off there you know you immediately know you have what the author meant especially wonderful playwrights you know especially a great artist like o'neill you know you know i mean he knew i mean he knew what an audience was and God knows he must have been a spent enough time with, it, with his father out on the road and all that stuff and having a ham bone around the house. And <laughs> he knew what was going on. O'Neill demands your best all the time. No, no, no less. And uh, the best you have. And uh, it, it, uh, it doesn't matter uh, if it's as good as somebody else or worse than somebody else. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. It only matters that it's you give him your best. And then it works. You know, it's wonderful, I think. It works beautifully. That's the, the eternal triangle. The, the writer, the audience, and the actor where they join. And here is the thing, when this hand comes up and pushes you, you go in there to a three hour and 45 minute performance, or, a, or four, 45, or five hours like in The Iceman, and if it's going right, it seems like about two minutes. 
you break time and space and time. Ralph Richardson said, every time we go on the stage at 8.30, when we used to be in the regular old days, we break time. We, if we do it right, we break space. And it's to our time to dream. We dream. We have to be able to dream. What a line, he says. Is that unbelievable?